Okay. Test, test, testing, testing. One, two, three. In the word of God, it says, I was glad when they said unto me to go into the house of the Lord. Amen. Good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. So good to see you all here, those who are here in person, as well as those who are here, those who are watching and joining us online. Thank you so much for choosing to worship with us today. And as you know, today is a special day, as you can see the communion table out front. Uh, today is when we celebrate the wonderful gift of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Uh, with that said, I ask that you bow your heads with me for a word of prayer as we get started this morning. Father, I thank you again, Lord, for this Sabbath day that you've given us. I thank you that it's a special day, Lord, where we are reminded of the ultimate sacrifice. Lord, I ask that your Holy Spirit will fill our hearts with joy. The joy knowing that sin has been defeated. So as we lift up our voices and we praise your name, we ask that your Holy Spirit worship with us. In Jesus' precious name I pray, amen. All right, I have a few announcements for you as we get started this morning. First things first, I just want to mention you all who have been here in person, you have noticed uh, the, the building fund going to good use. Just last week, someone said, I am so thankful those busted tiles on the chapel are finally fixed. I'm thankful too, amen. Uh, on the roof here at the church, some of those tiles that were broken have also been fixed. And if you've made your way down to the classroom area, fellowship hall area, where the bathrooms are, you will notice that the walls seem a bit brighter. So we praise God that God has blessed us to take care of our church facility. Uh, thank you so much for giving to that building fund. We've done really well. Uh, currently, the building fund, or at least as of January, the, the, the end of February, sorry, we have raised $52,810 out of our $80,000 goal. So thank you for that, and you will continue to see more things being refreshed and taken care of. Care of. Uh, it's God's house, and we want to make sure it looks like it's God's house. Amen? Amen. Also, just to remind everyone, we are back with Sabbath School in person as well as online. Uh, feel free to join. It was a good discussion this morning. Uh, we also have the lower level Sabbath school class for the children going on as well in person. So please keep that in mind. And remember that Tuesday night we have our Zoom call, Tuesday night connect Zoom call. Wednesday night is Wednesday night prayer meeting on Zoom. Uh, Thursday night is Bible study. And the Sabbath evening Bible study has changed from Daniel and now they will be studying history and reformation, history of reformation and Protestantism. So if you're interested in that, please join. The information is on your newsletter and you can jump in and join that lively discussion as well. Also, just a quick announcement about this evening. Uh, there will be a few people here playing basketball. Uh, those who feel comfortable and you are able, the gym will be open this evening at 7.30 uh, for those who think you still got it and those who may still have it. Who knows? <laughs> but there will be a group here playing basketball this evening as well. So bring a friend. Let someone else know about that. I uh, hope you've been paying attention to the different women we have highlighted for Women's History Month and our newsletter. Today, this week's, it's Susan B. Anthony. I think a lot of us are familiar with her. But can thank you so much to our newsletter crew for providing some interesting fun facts and some things we actually, I didn't know everything that I've read. Even though some of you may think I know everything because I'm the pastor, I really don't know everything. <laughs> uh, also, if you want to keep up on our church budget, and our tithe update, we have now included that information in the newsletter. 
so you can know where the church stands financially. Yes, we don't have a bulletin that we are handing out like we did in the past, but all that information can be found online as well as on the newsletter. Another calendar item I just want to bring your attention to is an interesting one. In our newsletter, April 17th, we have a blood drive for a little girl named Xingjing. Uh, she has a blood disorder, and it's interesting. Her mother was actually one of my professors at Andrews, uh, at La Sierra. So our conference is working with the family to do a blood drive on the 17th. And some of you may be wondering, uh, isn't the 17th Easter? What better day to actually give blood and to help a little girl out? So we are doing it on Easter. It will be at the conference office in Glendale. I know that seems like it may be a drive for some of you, but we've thought about that, the committee that has helped plan this. So starting from 9.30, I believe, there will be a taco stand with both vegetarian and non-vegetarian options going throughout the entire blood drive. Uh, there will be face painting for the kids Ooh, and what else? Maybe a few games and some giveaways. So we are trying to turn it into a fun event. But most importantly, if you are able and willing, we'd like you to check the link. It's in the church newsletter and register to actually donate blood for this wonderful cause as well. I believe, sorry, last announcement. We did not have board meeting last week. I, um, there is a scheduling error on my end and I apologize for that. So board meeting will be this coming Monday night. So ke please keep that in mind board members and we will also decide how we will proceed with the mask and the new mandates or how the mandates have been rescinded. So we will decide as a church how we want to go forward. So I just want you all to keep in mind and to prepare yourself. You may see a congregation where some people will still choose to wear a mask. And guess what? That is okay. Some people will choose not to. And if we decide that's where we're okay with, that is okay as well. Uh, we want to make sure we respect each other and love one another. Masking is not a spiritual issue. Please let's not make it a test of faith or a spiritual issue. Uh, if you have some questions on that or you think it is, I implore you to do some research on the Adventist church during the pandemic in 1918. Uh, interesting how where Solomon says in Ecclesiastes, there's nothing new under the sun we've actually repeated ourselves During that last pandemic, there was the fight over, should we mask, should we not mask? Then people started masking, then they took it off. So human nature, we, we tend to do the same things over and over again. But I'm hoping as a church family, we can love one another with the decision we decide to go forward with. Those are all the announcements I have for you. I hope you are blessed by the rest of service today. We are all truly glad that you're all here today, whether it's here at church or online. We're all excited to praise our Lord and Savior. Amen? Amen. So if you can, please join us as we sing, There is Power in the Blood.
God great? Amen. Can I get amen again? Amen. Amen. You know, I don't know if your week has been good or bad. I don't know if your week has been exciting or scary. But just remember that through the time of the storm that you may face, remember that God is there and he will help you through that storm until the end because God, he is truly above all. He is above all everything. So as we worship today, let us all just remember that God is above all. Let's worship together.
I'll continue with our worship with Precious is the Blood. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning, church, and happy Sabbath. Good morning, church, and happy Sabbath. That's better. How are you today? It is a bright day, and I'm sure our hearts are filled with that warmth of the sunshine. This time, those who can kneel, let us kneel for a prayer. Eternal loving Father in heaven, God Almighty, King of kings and Lord of lords, we bow down before you this mo morning, thanking you for your goodness, thanking you for all you have done for us, 
thanking you for bringing us here to your house of worship. How nice it is for us to worship together, to honor you, to praise you, to glorify your name. Thank you, Master, for allowing us in this. At this moment, Lord, we have petitions for those who are sick. Their names are in our bulletin. And some are somewhere calling on your help, Lord, wherever they are. Father, some are emotionally sick and some spiritual sick. Heavenly Father, how we pray that you may reach out to them. Touch those who are sick, Lord, and give them the healing that comes from you. Some, Lord, are struggling in life. They have no food on their table. They have no shelter. They have nothing. They are crying out to you. Heavenly Father, meet their needs according to your will. And Lord, there are some who have lost their dear ones. Sister Karen, who laid her father last week or this week, and Brother Brian, who is laying his father to rest on Monday. And there are many more, Lord who are crying who are for their dear ones whom they have lost. Be with them, Lord. You are the greatest comforter. No one else, Lord, who can do it but you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the things that you do unto us. And uh, Lord, this month, it was the month of uh, women's, from the conference, it was... Uh, put for the women's prayer month. Heavenly Father, I hope this has impacted many of us and that this shouldn't end our prayer efforts because everything was out when we pray. Thank you, Father. At this moment, I pray for the pastor who is going to give us a word. Open our hearts so that we may receive your word. And today, being the day that, Lord, your son did a job on earth to redeem us. So, Lord, be with us. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness and clothe us with your righteousness. And Heavenly Father, continue being with us for the rest of the service. Thank you, thank you. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading comes from the book of uh, John. John 13. Verses 1 to 5. John 13, verses 1 to 5. I'm going to read from New King James Version. It reads, Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour has come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own, which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he was come from God and went to God. He rises from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and guarded himself. After that, 
he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet and wipe them with a towel. Where with he was gathered. May the Lord add blessings to his word. Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. How many of you have caught yourself remembering what God did in your life and was so amazed? I'm pretty sure everybody has. Um, in September, most of you know, September and October of last year, my family was hit with COVID. And my husband fell out. Um, was hit really bad. Not only COVID itself, but three fourths of his lungs was caught with pneumonia. Blood clots from the head to the lungs, to the heart, to the hands, even his feet. And also his oxygen was stable as in 65. And that's really low. Plus a heart attack and a mini stroke. And you know, that moment is when I look back in my life, when life hits me with so, un so many uncertainties, God is always there. And you know, after being hospitalized for three days, on a Friday, the doctor, four doctors had called me at the same time and said, told me a news that I never want to hear, told me that they've tried so many things and the last option was to have him on the ventilator and a very slight chance he'll make it. I tell you, once that hit me, I felt so numb, so helpless and I felt my fear rising higher than my faith. And it's, you know, it's normal. When we go through something, our fear comes first. But then when I sat, because of COVID restriction, the closest I can get to my husband is in the parking lot. And, um, I didn't know what side of the hospital he was in. But that day that they put the ventilator on, I, I had to be close. So I went to the parking lot. And this is the very first time I have gone through a trial without my husband near me, by my side, where I, we cried together, we prayed together, I was, I was with my kids, but they wouldn't understand what I was going through, because they were going through themselves, what I was going through, but in a different, you know. And I tell you, five hours in that parking lot, this is the very first time I prayed out loud. I cried and I, just gave everything to God. And I really didn't care who was looking at me. <laughs> I didn't care. I was trying to tell God my pain, as he already knows. And I prayed for my husband. You know, sitting there for five hours, it got me thinking the times God has been there for my life and how he answered my prayers at that time. In 2000, we lost a son due to Sid, sudden infant death. In 2001, my twin, Stella and Sawana, were born at 24 weeks, fighting for their lives. 2005, my son, Fatani, 
was diagnosed when I was five months pregnant with him that he's gonna be a Down syndrome baby. And they wanted me to abort him. And 2009, Fatani had a surgery, a uvula surgery. And during that surgery, they found a cancerous mole under his foot. And they removed it at that surgery. And then 2014, I have my Makaloni um, with a hole in his heart, fighting to survive. He also was on a ventilator, nearly died. But you know, God is so good. You know, it gets me stronger in my faith in him. Because every time, he's always pulled me through. And, you know, it's not easy, but I know if you have God in your heart, everything is possible. He can make the, the you know, the answers that we don't want to know, <laughs> we don't want to go through, turn them and make an, a blessing out of it. And, you know, at that time, instead of only praying for my husband, I had to pray for myself. I ask God to sustain my faith in him. Because sometimes we, we focus on praying for the one that is going through the struggles, but we forget to pray for ourselves. And uh, my fear was going up and down, up and down. But I had to ask God to sustain my faith in him and to get me through this. And you know, I thank all of you, because it wasn't only my prayer. I know it's the prayers of many of you that helped me get through what, I, what we did. And I know, and I thank you all for all the love you guys dropped at my doorstep, all the prayers. And I just wanna be here to thank you in person. I know my kids probably thank you already, but I wanted to thank you from the bottom of my our hearts that, um, you know, without you guys and your prayers, I wouldn't get through what I went through. And Fa'al is missing church. He missed that piano of his <laughs> playing here at church. But you know, in God's time, he will be back. He's still fighting a little health complication from what he went through, but we're at the end of, of that and getting better. And, uh, you know, it's, I'm not sharing this to say I'm better than anyone. It's not that. I'm sharing this because you may be going through something. You may be battling something right now. And I encourage you, encourage anyone who felt, you know, if someone has passed away in your family, you know, and someone who was diagnosed with a sickness, or even fighting COVID, financial issues, remember God is, is there. He will never leave your side. And, you know, let us not forget, God left heaven just to die for our sins. And God will give you peace in your storm. And he will calm the raging sea, even if the answers are not the answers we're looking for. God knows best. And he will never, never leave our side. You know, I didn't do it. God did it. He did it for me. And I believe he can do it for you. And again, all he wants us to do is trust and believe. May the words of this song be a blessing to you. darkness in the middle of the night I'm praying for assurance everything's gonna be all right Lord in another battle that is out in front of me I'm afraid I won't be able and I'll go down in defeat 
do you remember where I brought you from? Just take a look behind you and how far you come. Lord, and every time you ask me, didn't I deliver you? So why would you be thinking that I wouldn't see you through? Didn't I walk on the water and I calmed the raging sea? I spoke to the wind and it hushed and I gave you peace. Didn't I run to your rescue? Didn't I hear you when you called? I walked right beside you just so you wouldn't fall. Leave all of heaven just to die for your sins. I searched until I found you and I'll do it all again. And now she's talking to her father in a house that was once a home. She said, my bills are coming due, Lord, and six days is not that long. She hears a voice so soft and low. She said, I move like that before. And I'll do this little thing, and oh, I'll give you so much more. And I calm the raging sea. I spoke to the wind, and it hushed, and I gave you peace. Didn't I run to your rescue? Didn't I hear you when you called? right beside you just so you wouldn't fall didn't I leave all of heaven just to die for your sins I've searched until I found you and I'll do it all again didn't I leave all of heaven just to die for your sins searched until I found you and I'll do it all Amen again. Thank you so much, Sister Sia, especially for the testimony. Man, that's a book right there, boy. All of what that you and your family have gone through. Have mercy. Happy Sabbath again, everyone. Those watching online, happy Sabbath to you as well. It is definitely a blessing to be in the house of the Lord. Especially on this day where we get to celebrate communion. I ask that you bow your heads with me as we get started. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you again, Lord, for being such a good God. Especially after hearing that powerful testimony. We are truly grateful for all that you've done for us, Lord. Uh, Lord, in these next few moments, I pray that we... We, we get a clearer understanding of what you've done for us and how much you love us. Be with my words and my thoughts. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If I were to tell you, church, as you see on the screen, that tonight was your last night to live, what would you do? Go ahead, yell it out. What would you guys do? Be with my family, kids, pray, oh, hey, amen to that, pray. Anyone trying to go on a trip? 
<laughs> take a short flight to someplace fun. <laughs> like, I'm out of here. <laughs> so if I were to tell you that this is it, I think most of us would want to be near the ones we love, um, pray, <laughs> make sure everything's all right, <laughs> and that the next face we see is that of Jesus. Um, I dare say there may be some of us who uh, we, may, we may break the bank open a little bit, buy that six-figure car that we said, ah, that made no sense before, uh, just to say I, I, I did it before I died. Or maybe that expensive meal at that expensive restaurant you've, you've never gone to. Uh, or maybe take a helicopter ride as far as you could. But I, I think we would try to make an effort to do something meaningful if we knew tonight was it. I look at the story of Jesus, that Last Supper, Passover celebration with his disciples, where the Bible tells us Jesus knew it was his last night. He knew this was it. Everything after this would lead up to his death. And what Jesus does, I don't know if I would have done what Jesus did, if I'm completely honest. I know he loved his disciples. I probably would have said, uh, guys, it's been fun. I'm out of here. I'm going to go get my mom and my brothers. And I'm going to go hang with them. You all figure it out. I've taught you well. Go. Go be disciples. Uh, if I were Jesus, maybe I would have spent the night praying really hard like he did before, trying to get myself ready for what was to come even more. But we, we, I, I find joy in the fact that none of us are Jesus, and Jesus is Jesus. And in his last night, the Bible tells us he does something extremely powerful. So if you have your Bibles, please turn with me to the book of John, chapter 13. And if you have your Bibles on your phone or your iPad or watching online, you pull it up on another screen, whatever you have it on. Verse 1 says, Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come, that he should depart from this world to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Just think about that for a moment. Jesus is there with his disciples, and he knows this is it. And he loves them so much that he is all right spending his last moments with his disciples, his last free moments with his disciples. And not only does he just mind spending those last free moments with them, he does some things. It tells us in verse 2, and supper being ended, so after they ate, after the devil having already put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, rose from supper and laid aside his garments, took a towel and girded himself. That's a lot going on there. Uh, am I a bit too echoey? Can we turn me down a little bit? As I, as I look at this passage, we're told this is after they've had a good time celebrating the Passover meal. They're sitting there. You know how it is after you eat and you're just kind of in lazy mode and you're lounging out. You don't want to be bothered by anything or you definitely don't want to do any work. <laughs> My wife will tell you, um, I generally do not immediately wash the dishes after we eat. Is that fair to say? That, that's fair to say. I was like, I like to wait a few hours later, you know, like let, let the food settle a little bit. I don't have time for that, man. It, it, the dishes aren't going anywhere. They'll still be there when I get to them. I'm a joy to be around, you can tell. <laughs> but here we see, so this is after that. This is after Satan has already put it on Judas's heart to betray Jesus. And depending on which Christian author you read, you, you get the idea that G Judas thought he was 
forcing Jesus's hand and he was going to help Jesus, if I can, you know, push him into action, if I can push him into a life-threatening situation, maybe he'll have to flex and use his power and we can overthrow all these people. Whatever those, those selfish motivations, this was already done. And Jesus, knowing all of this, knowing everyone's mindset, can we, can we stop right there? If you were going to tell me that tonight was it, I'm getting arrested tomorrow and I'll be dead by the end of tomorrow, and I know one of you in this church is the one who turned me in, yeah, I'm not sitting with you. Nope, that's not happening. If anything, I'm like, can, can brother, sister, let's, let's go in the back real quick. I want to mention something to you with my fist. Like, no, I, I am not going to sit down and lounge around with the person who I know just snitched on me, for lack of a better word, and turned me over, and that's going to be it for me, and this is why I'm not Jesus. So this tells us something. This is very important, because what Jesus does next, it says he girds himself, he pours out some water into a basin, and he began to wash the disciples' feet. Does it say he began to wash everyone's feet but Judas? No. It said he washed all the disciples' feet. So, so when you, we, 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 we view this thing, we don't really sometimes get the significance of it. By him girding himself, wrapping up his, his, his tunic across his legs, hiking it up, he's actually putting himself now in a servant position. The servants are the ones who do that. When, when they booked and ordered this room, no, they didn't have an app back then. They had to actually go face to face. When they when they booked this room, it probably came with a servant who was going to wash the feet and do these things. And they probably generally ignored this person for the most part. But Jesus is now putting himself in this position. He's lowering himself. It's almost, to Peter, it's almost a sign of humiliation. And why do I say that? Because... It tells us in verse 6, then he came to Simon Peter, and Peter said to him, Lord, are you washing my feet? And it's not a natural question. It's one of these rhetorical questions. And when you read it in the original language, it's in a negative context. Like, you're, the, you're, you're Jesus. You're the Messiah. You shouldn't be washing feet. What's wrong with you? That's what we have servants for. Let me do it. Let someone else do it. You're the man. We're following you. Don't get down and wash your feet. Wash our feet. No, 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 no. That, that, that doesn't make any sense. That's, that's almost like the equivalent of, of President Biden going to, uh, to like Skid Row and, and tearing up his clothes and, 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 and washing homeless people's feet. People are like, whoa, what's going on? He could have just sent some money and sent someone else to do that. Like, that's insane. Don't do that. This is what Jesus, in essence, is doing. He's doing something that, with his status, let me correct that. With his perceived earthly status, how they are perceiving it, he should not be doing this. This is wrong. This is humiliating. How, how can a leader, how can the Messiah, we've seen you raise the dead. We've seen you do these wonderful things. How dare you hike up your robes and garments and tie it around and, and get in this position of serving and then he's washing feet, and we know it's not like how feet are today. Side note, some of us have some jacked up feet, guilty. But it's still not the same. Back then, your feet were your means of travel. You walk. They were basically your tires. You ever wash your car tires and you see how dirty and grimy they are and the rims are just filthy? That's what people's feet were back then. Okay, it wasn't nice covered up, and even if your feet look bad, at least you can hide them most of the time, and you're sitting in a car, or you're on some vehicle, or on a bike, or something. But these were, these were nasty feet, and they were walking through all the filth on the street. You're thinking horses, just right there, and they're walking through this stuff. Like, th this is not nice feet, okay? This is why Peter has this idea, like, what is he doing? You're our leader. How can our leader, how can the one who's going to overthrow Rome and overthrow the religious stories, how can you do such a thing? What is wrong with you? Makes no sense. Peter says in verse 8, you shall never wash my feet. So he doubles down. He doubled down on this thing. 
Verse 10, Jesus said to him, he who is bathed needs only to wash his feet. Oh, sorry, sorry. Let me skip back. Verse 8, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, if I do not wash you, you have no part with me. Wow. So then Peter responds, Lord, (laughs) not only my feet, but wash my hands and my head, like do everything, you know, or just take care of everything. I look at this story, and, it, and it's the epitome of Jesus' mission. It doesn't say Jesus gets to Judas and say, you ain't no good. You kind of need to leave. I'm not washing your feet, dude. He washes his feet as well from our understanding of the story. So what does that tell us about the Jesus we serve? First and foremost, he definitely is humble. But his love for us is so great. That even on his last free night on earth, he decided to spend that time with disciples who still, even at this point, didn't quite understand the whole mission. In all those two and a half, three years they had spent with him, things still didn't click. You imagine that? Your last night of freedom and you're spending it with people who don't fully get you. And we live in a society, society that says, you know, make sure you're with someone who gets you. Yeah, you find your person who gets you. We always want to be comfortable and around someone who understands me and gets me. And Jesus in his last moments is around a group of people who they really don't have a clue still. They're still trying to figure that thing out. But Jesus knows that his example is going to be an example that is going to stand the test of time. We are still doing it to this day. And he knows how important this is to show these disciples what he is doing and how important it is. And then he does it also to an enemy. So we look at the mission of Jesus, and Jesus is saying through this act, first of all, I'm showing you that you all need to be servants. You need to take this servant position. This is how you will make it when I leave you, by serving others and and taking care of one another. Be that servant inspired by my father in heaven then he says i am actually here my mission is both for those who will ignore me and those who accept me just think about that he washed the feet of the one who turned him in as well as peter who was trying to stop him jesus christ is for one and all not a select group and, you know, this, this was pretty much prophetic in how it happens. He's there for everyone. Some accept him. Some choose to do their own thing. It happened with his own disciples. It happens today. We live in a world where it's constantly happening. And Jesus is saying, <laughs> like he told Peter, if I don't wash your feet, you have no part. If you don't let me serve you, if you don't let me fight the battles for you, if you don't let me do everything that I need to do in your life and on your hearts. You actually have no part of me. The interesting thing here, both Peter and Judas tried to intervene and push Jesus' hand. They both had that mindset of, I'm going to help Jesus out. One by turning him in, it's like, he's got to unleash his power. He's not going to sit there and let them capture and kill him. And the other one saying, no, 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 no. You're up here. Jesus. You're, we're going to be up here. No, no, you don't do that. Let me do that. So for us today, church, first thing, stop trying to help Jesus. That's a sermon that could go on for about three weeks, how we want to help Jesus all the time. Oh, Jesus, I I know you're busy controlling the universe. I got this one. I got this one. But when it comes down to it, we don't want, if we are still fighting for control with Jesus, We're basically saying what Peter was until Jesus had to let him know, if you don't let me serve you, if you don't let me do what I need to do in your life, not just your feet, but from your feet down to the tip of your head, and and especially your hearts and your minds, if you don't let me do what I need to do, you have no part of me. And that same message is burning for us today. If we don't let Jesus come into our lives and we're just constantly fighting. No, 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 I have it, I have it, I have it. I have it under control. Newsflash, we don't have anything under control. You watch the news lately? We don't have anything under control. 
Not a thing. It is only by the grace of God that we were able to sit here in church and, and have somewhat of a sane mind. It is only by his grace. And he's saying, let me come in and let me do what I need to do in your lives. Then the second thing, it is not up to us to decide who is worthy and who isn't worthy. Because Jesus said, I'm here for everyone, even the people who will, in essence, reject me. And, you know, with the example of Judas, it's even worse. How do you live with this man for these, these handful of years? You see him doing his ministry. You know what he's doing. You un you're, you're understanding a little bit. And yet you still reject him and say, no, no, no. And that's a warning. If we don't let Jesus wash our hearts and wash our minds, all this knowledge that we know, going to church on, we go to church on the right day. I know the Ten Commandments like the back of my hand. I can tell you prophecy. I, I, it doesn't mean a thing if he has not touched your heart and you haven't let him do that work and that cleansing and that washing. Because you know all the filth that they walked through back then? That doesn't compare to the filth in our hearts and our minds. Let's be honest. And Jesus is saying, step aside, let me serve you. Let me be the example for you. Take this and run with it when I am gone. And that's the third thing. How can we be of service? Last time I checked, I'm not able to heal people. I, I know, I've tried. It's the prayers from others. The, when Jesus decides to heal, that's when it happens. It's not on my time frame. I haven't been able to, uh, you know, multiply food like Jesus. Lord knows I wish I could. <laughs> Boy, whew, be eating pizza all the time, just multiplying. Lord, I can't walk on water. So how as his followers, and we are in the footsteps of the disciples, how do we serve others? Well, we love them. We are patient with those who think different than we think. We are patient with those who look different and come from different backgrounds. And we're like, we really want to say, what you say is kind of insane to me. I, I don't understand that. But being different and being cleansed by Christ means you are patient with one another. And especially, like, can we be patient under the body of Christ? Can we start there before we take it to the world and try to recruit them? Because they come in and they look, you guys don't have your stuff together. Why would I want to join this? This is madness. Why would I want to join Christianity if this is what you all are doing? Why? That makes no sense. So he's asked us to follow in his footsteps and do the same thing, to serve one another. If you remember your Christian history, when Jesus rose and went up to heaven, they got together in, in a community in Jerusalem, and they started doing random stuff like, let's take care of the widows. That's a great idea. Yeah, let's, take, let's do this. Let's, let's just meet together. And their community was growing because they were doing weird things like, someone needs some money. Let's, let's give them a place to stay. Let's take They were meeting people's needs where people were, and people were joining, and they were multiplying exponentially day after day. Somewhere along the line, Christianity, we got a little comfortable and then we said, oh, we're a big deal now. We don't have to fight for survival. Ah, they, they need to change. You need to look like a Christian before we accept you into Christianity. You need to talk like a Christian before we accept you into the fold. Ah, you need to understand and know. Does Jesus do that? He literally spent his last night with a bunch of guys who really didn't fully understand what he was trying to tell them. So what does that tell me? If Jesus can do that, I can be a little patient with, with my brothers and sisters as well. I can extend a little love. I can, I can know when I'm being a knucklehead, and I can ask for forgiveness. If I truly believe and I want Jesus, the symbolic washing of my feet, but really, like Peter said, I want Jesus to wash all of me, my mind and my heart, my soul and everything, we have to get to the point where we, we actually start looking like we serve Jesus. Yeah, this is the slightly uncomfortable part. I'm all for love and grace and all this stuff, and at the same time, Christians should act different. Christians shouldn't be cheating on their spouses. Christians shouldn't be stealing money. Christians shouldn't be uh, uh, 
the horrible person with the foul mouth. And I understand I slipped up and I messed up. I'm sorry, God. I'm asking for forgiveness. That's different. When you, when you recognize you've messed up and you're asking God, oh, Lord, save me. I'm sorry. I messed up. That's the, I'm talking about the Christians who go on continuing to just do whatever they want to do and because they haven't let Jesus cleanse their heart and say, hey, I need you to change. I need you to be nicer to that person. I need you to be nicer to your family member. I need you to actually try and reflect me. I need you to get a little dirty and serve with that person and, and, and gird up yourself and, and get in the muck of their lives and to serve them a little bit. I need you to say sorry. That's a tough one. We don't like to admit when we are wrong. I tell you, my wife, we go back and we're like, I'm right on this one. No, you're, I'm right on this one. I like to tell a fib and say half the time I'm right, but that's not true. <laughs> I love you too. Got gotcha. you. Got gotcha. you. We have to get to the point where he has touched us to the point where we can say, yeah, I'm a mess and I have some issues. Like, let's be honest. Stop pretending. A lot of us are in the same boat as Peter, where we have Jesus and God way up here. Yeah, we are. no, no, no. And, and, and the thing is, the farther we, 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 the higher we look, we start putting ourselves higher. Oh, I'm getting closer, and I'm up high, I'm up high. And we need to be reminded, uh, you're actually probably a little lower and down here in actuality. Jesus doesn't care your status as a Christian, okay? He just wants you to love him and to be a part of him. And we have to move from that Christian status. And I, you know what I'm talking about. We have, you know some people who they are so holy, you can't tell them a thing. They, they're, they're holier than the Holy Bible. They'll tell you everything you've done wrong and, 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 oh, you're eating this, you're doing that, you're listening to this, you're watching this, all oh, that evil, 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 evil. You're like, wow, gee, thanks, you know, nice talking to you type of a thing. We don't see Jesus doing that when he even has opportunities to do that. True heart cleansing, when you look at it, look at the life of Peter. Peter actually has one of his biggest falls after this. The next night, he denies even knowing Jesus three times. You, you remember that part of the story? After this, Lord, cleanse all of me. Go, oh, 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 oh you're going to, I want to be a part of you. Cleanse all of me. And then when things got hot and uncomfortable, I don't know him. Jesus who? Jesus, I ain't one of those people. And then someone else saw him. He's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Not me. My son loves to say, no, 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 no. Yeah, no, 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 no. No, no, not me. Not me. I don't know that man. And then the third time, he's like, oh, I need to really show that I'm not a part of Jesus. Bleep! I don't know him. Bleep, 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 bleep! Yeah, I told you I wasn't one of them. But then what happens? Jesus rises and then has that instance with him. Do you love me, Peter? Do you love me, Peter? Do you love me? And, and, and Peter's just, <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I do, I do. And then we see after that a complete change where Peter is just fired up and he is doing the work. He is excited. He's a changed man. Even Peter, who's so pro-Jew and pro-Israel, has to have a come to Jesus moment with Paul. He's like, you need to learn to love other people, Peter. It's not just about the people you want and the people who live in your city. It's about other people. And, and we, we forget Peter was a zealot. His whole thing was pro-Israel. Kill the Romans, kill all outsiders, kill the Gentiles. We don't have time for that. It's all about us. And even he got to the point where he had that vision. He's like, okay, Jesus' message is truly for everyone. It truly is for everyone. Wow. So that's what heart change looks like. It's not immediate, but it's a gradual process. And each and every one of us needs to get to that point where we are saying, Jesus, don't just wash my feet, but I need you to wash all of me because we want to be a part of you. And more importantly, we want him to touch our hearts and our minds in such a powerful way where he can connect with us and we can learn how to love others. That's the Jesus that we serve. Who on his last night says, I know how important it is that I spend this time with my disciples. Could have just split off with the, the three he really liked, you know. No, no, no. He spent that time with all of them. He said, it is important that they need to see this, that my mission is for everyone, even those who reject me. 
what I've done is enough to cover them if they turn around. My mission is for those who are just thinking, we're up top, we're up top. I need to let you know I'm here for you and bring you back down. His mission and his love is for all of us. We just have to let him do what he needs to do in our lives, church. So as we're about to break for communion, I just ask you to to meditate. First, Lord, have I, have I let you into my heart? Have I let you into all of it? Because sometimes we'll, we'll let them into a piece, and then we want to box Jesus off in a corner. Don't, don't touch my entertainment, Jesus. Don't touch my, yeah, you can have the family life. Don't touch my job. Don't, I'll give you this, but you can't have all of it. Jesus is saying, let me get in there and cleanse all of it. Let me cleanse all of it. And I know it's scary at times. Oh, what's going to happen? He's not going to have you looking strange, okay? He works with you where you are. But I want you to meditate on that. Like, Lord, have I let you in 100% to do the cleansing that you need to do? And then the second thing to meditate on. Lord, how can I serve? How can I use that example that you gave your disciples? How can I serve today? And that's my prayer for us today, church family. First one, have we let them in and have we let them clean house? Second one, how can we serve? Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Father, in your word we've seen how you decided to spend your last free night on earth before your death. You spent it with some knuckleheads. But you served them, you got down, and you served them. And you showed them that only you can truly provide the cleaning that they need in their lives. You reminded them that you were there for the good and the bad and everyone in between. You reminded them of how much you truly loved them. So Lord, we're here over 2,000 years later And we're honestly in the same boat. We are in need of a Savior to cleanse our hearts. So as we sit in this sanctuary and we're about to to break for communion, Lord, my first prayer is that we are reminded that your victory over sin covers all sins. There is no sin too great that you can't forgive. And then to come to that realization that we can be forgiven, Lord, help us to give ourselves completely to you. Give you access to all of our heart and all of our minds. We want you to do a cleansing in our hearts that only you can do. We want that cleansing. Help us to give up control. Help us to trust you more. Help us to to stop sinning and, and, and help us work up to the different levels of growth that you would have us work up to. Help us to love one another. Help us to be patient with one another. And then, Lord, as you're cleansing, you don't ask us to stand by. You ask us to serve. And I know there's some people in this audience, Lord, and watching online. They have some desires. They want to see some things happen at church that they've never seen before. And they may be afraid because they've never seen it before. Lord, I want to remind them that you gave them that thing. And I'm praying this is a place where we could see that come to fruition. So for that person who's trying to figure out, I want to do this and I find great joy in this. I know God has given me this. Please, please get in contact with me or one of the elders at church. Share that passion. We almost have a blank slate here to serve this community. And God is saying, Canoga Park, how are you going to serve that community? We ask these things, Lord, because we know you are more than capable of answering. We love you, and we understand your love for us is deeper, better than anything we could fully comprehend, and we are truly grateful for that. In the precious name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 
At this time, we are going to break for communion. I just want to remind everyone here at the Canoga Park Community Seventh-day Adventist Church, we believe in open communion, which means if you believe Christ is your Savior, you are more than welcome to participate. Uh, at this time, you can dismiss out the doors. The family room is in the chapel. Thank you. So if you want to go as a family, you can go in the chapel. The women are in the next room over, and the men are on the right side, correct? No? The, everyone's on the left side, just the, the men will be in the third room down. And if you would prefer to stay in the sanctuary, you are also able to sit in the sanctuary. We'll have some music playing uh, while you sit here. But all are welcome to join uh, for communion. You are dismissed at this time. Oh, sorry. Last thing, when you come back, please sit every other row so the deacons and deaconesses can squeeze in as they serve communion. Now you are dismissed.
Happy Sabbath again, everyone. And I just always like to explain everything for the kids. I remember when I was young and I was always trying to figure out, what are they doing up front? So here I have a little basin of water where I wash my hands. And in some traditions, it's symbolic of you know, Jesus washing the disciples' feet, even though after we have done that already. And uh, I have a larger piece of the bread. This is for the kids. Zoom in. Uh huh. Yep. And I just break a little piece off here and there. Just a reminder that Jesus was beaten for our sins and part of that sacrifice. The good thing is, though, we know he wasn't broken. Amen. And we are grateful for that. And you will notice today something looks familiar. I will let you be surprised by that. <laughs> Just some signs of the times as we move out of the pandemic and try to get back to some things we used to do.
1 Corinthians 11.23 says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At this time we will say a blessing on the bread. Oh Lord in heaven, thank you so much for this blessed and beautiful Sabbath day and the special thanks of communion, Lord. This is the day we remember you, Lord, and we thank you for sacrificing yourself, Father. This bread which we have broken is symbolic of your, your body that is broken. Please bless it, Lord, and help us to always remember you and love you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Everyone, you can grab your piece of bread and let us eat together. Verse 25, after the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the new te testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as do drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do chew the Lord's bread till he come. You are blessing of the cup. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for what you sacrificed. Thank you for being there for us when we still were your enemy. And come to rescue us uh, by your only 
one time sacrifice forever and it's worth for whoever who wants to take it and that you save us for our sins and all of us enemies and give us the hope of eternal life to join it with you in the name of Jesus amen and drink Amen for that reminder. The blood that was shed, the body that was sacrificed, so each one of us could be here and have a chance at eternal life with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's some good stuff right there, boy. <laughs> at this time, we are going to sing, I believe, one verse of Marching to Zion. I'd ask that you would stand, and after we sing this verse, we'll have a benediction and we will also collect an offering for the needy uh, at the door as you are exiting. So at this time, we will sing Marching to Zion. Come we that love the Lord and let our joys be known. Join in a song with sweet accord. Join in a song with sweet accord, and thus surround the throne, and thus surround the throne. We're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upwards. to reach that beautiful city, we are thankful for the ultimate sacrifice of Jesus Christ. There's no hope of eternity, no hope of that city without Christ. So as we leave this place reminded of what he did for us, let us go dedicate our lives to him. Let us show the joy that we serve a risen Savior. In Jesus' precious name I pray, amen. Amen. All right, we will march out and you are all welcome to exit behind us.